Morris presentation about smart processing of millions of PDF files with no code required. My name is Stefan and I'm going to guide you through this 15 minute presentation here. Firstly, with a quick overview of our low code and no code applications, but mainly with two real life use cases of companies we had this year and how we have responded to these requirements with two of our products, Kingfisher and Autobahn. Now, firstly, a quick overview of our applications. Autobahn is a high performance, high volume automated OCR system. We will look at Autobahn in our second use case. Searchlight OCR is an automated in-place processing tool for OCR, which ensures that all your documents are and remain fully searchable, whether that is in SharePoint or in your local file system. Once documents are fully searchable, Searchlight Tagger can enhance that searchability even further by adding metadata tags based on the document content. And that again is an automated background process which runs 24 seven. Kingfisher is an automated document organization tool which allows to rename and split files by various criteria like text or barcode and it also allows for text extraction. PDF Connector is our participation in the Power Automate platform where we provide 10 OCR, PDF and data extraction related steps in Power Automate. Now let's have a look at the bulk processing architecture of all of our products. They all run as a background service, which means they are available and work 24 seven for you. All our products are scalable by the number of CPU cores. The cores correspond to parallel processing. Basically, the more cores you have, the more documents are processed in parallel. Typical configurations are four or eight cores. Some of our heavy duty users have multiple installations of 64 cores each. Many of our clients come from highly regulated environments like government, legal, financial or pharma, and therefore they heavily rely on these automated scheduled processes. Our products do not require daily handholding. They only manage exceptions really once they are set up. Quick look at the user interfaces. They are very project orientated and I hope you agree when you see these that you get the impression there's no coding required to manage our products. But if you really, really, really want to do some coding, you can still use some regular expressions for filters, execute some scripts or work with command line, even an API for Autobahn. And we also have an SDK. Let's look at that first use case, Alpha, a transport company based here in the UK and um, shipping a lot of goods in and out of Europe. Now, I promised you to make that a little bit lighthearted. Let's take a look at the owner of that transport company. Let's call him David. And he's got a lot of trucks, a lot of pallets and goods, and first and foremost, a lot of paperwork. He has to keep all these records for seven years. Now that gives him a big headache because he needs to file the paperwork very detailed for each shipment, each pallet, each truck, and each date. Now, the paperwork itself is quite comprehensive. It contains all sorts of details about what is in that shipment, delivery notes, invoices, certificates. Some have barcodes, others don't. Now, let's have a look at what happens in this company every day and what needs doing. Now, first and foremost, hundreds of pages are being scanned every day. And they've got a good CRM going and that generates a cover sheet with the main data about that shipment. Um, and that um, these data are contained in a QR code. Now the problem is partly that the papers relating to one shipment, they may be scanned in the morning, in the afternoon, or even a few days later because they come in at all sorts of different times. And when somebody's at the scanner, that doesn't mean that they just scan paperwork for one shipment. They scan it for truck number one, two, and three at the same time. So what arrives in the scanner is not really usable or findable or sortable. And where do we need to get to? 
we need to be able to find any shipment paperwork by three criteria in the end. That's the console reference, that's basically the truck it's going on. The file reference, it's basically relating to the actual shipment, what is contained in it, and the shipment date. So these are our three main critical data by which we want to be able to find anything at any time and quickly. So in other words, we need to get from a huge amount of paper, which currently the company keeps literally on pallets in huge boxes, labeled roughly with when they were uh, sort of kept um, and puts them in the warehouse. Now we need to find everything ideally by a particular folder, i.e. the shipment month, and by the three data we set, the console reference, the file reference and the shipment date. So that's where we want to arrive. Now how do we get there? We use Kingfisher. Kingfisher is an end user product of Aquaforest, which does all these things for us in four steps. Now here we're at step one, which is basically we're splitting this file by barcode. So all the user needs to do is select that split PDF file by barcode option and define where it expects the barcode. That's all done in, in a matter of minutes. The next slightly trickier step is to extract the shipping date. Now we get the shipping date from the QR code of the CRM cover sheet, but that also contains the console reference and the file reference. So what we need to do in a slightly more complex step is we need to strip out the month and the year of the shipping date. And we do that simply by reading the barcode and then using some regular expressions. So that's what the barcode contains. But what we are interested in is simply the 2021 and the 05 here to create our folder with that name. And that is done with a handful of simple settings in Kingfisher. I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but we effectively we're stripping the date away at the end. So that leaves us just with the 2021-05 reference here. And that is what we're using in the next step. Let's take a look at um, step number four, making the folder and renaming the file. This is done in the file naming tab where we create this string here on the top. We may make use of some variables which are available. Let's have a look in detail. First, we use the value number two to create the filing folder featuring the year and month of the shipment. Then we use the actual value one barcode read with the three references we spoke about earlier. And to that, we add a date and timestamp of the scan and an index at the very end. Okay, now let's talk about our second use case, use case Bravo. In this case, a bank. Let's have a look again at what happens in the bank and what needs doing. Now, this is a regional European bank with roughly 3,000 employees. And as for, with any modern bank, much of the customer communication is done via email. Now, they've got a strict IT setup. And one of the restrictions is that email attachments are not allowed to be larger than 20 megabytes. Now, as you can imagine, many contracts get signed and scanned with a bank. Attachments get all scanned together in a PDF. And what happens is that often these files become larger than 20 megabytes, and that results in the fact that they cannot be emailed. So therefore, this bank basically came to us and said, look, we need an, an effective compression tool that allows all of our employees, wherever they are in all the different branches, to individually compress files as and when needed. Now, one thing they didn't want to do is to install 3,000 different pieces of software on each person's computer. And the other requirement was that they said, okay, the system needs to reside within the bank's infrastructure. We don't want to go out to a cloud service to, to achieve this. Now, we recommended our Autobahn product to this client, and I want to give you a very quick overview of Autobahn. First and foremost, it's a workflow application, meaning that it monitors an input location, then processes the files and moves them to an output location. You've already seen the Autobahn interface very briefly. Now we've got three main columns here. On the left hand side, we've got the job steps which are available, which can be added to the middle column here, where we basically build a kind of playlist of the particular job steps to be executed for that job. 
They can be added, ordered and reordered here. And last not least, for each of these drop steps here in the playlist, we can set all the detailed technical step properties on the bottom right. Let's take a look at our bank again. What we suggested to our bank was to use Autobahn to compress their employees' files via SharePoint. Now, that's a very simple scenario. In theory, the employees move the uncompressed files to a specific SharePoint input location. Autobahn then compresses them and sends them to a SharePoint, SharePoint output location where the employee can pick them up. There is options to rename these files. They could be underscore compressed or version two. That is all possible to set in the Autobahn step details, but not obligatory, of course. What then happens with the other files? That needs to be decided in detail. The input files are still there at the end of that process, so they could be archived, they could be deleted or renamed, and platforms like Power Automate could be used to achieve that. Likewise, if people don't want to wait or don't want to permanently check their output folders, one could automate to say, we send an email every time a, a compressed file arrives in a particular output folder. Okay, let's have a brief look at the setup. So we have a SharePoint setup here. On the left-hand side, we create a library. In our case, it's just called ADX compression. And within that library, we've got two main folders. The main folders are called in and out very self-explanatory. And both the in and out folders have subfolders. And in this case, there would be one subfolder for each employee. So the employee only really deals with his or her documents and does not get involved in any other person's documents. We've just taken a sample here to say we've got 08, 17 and 23. Let's take a look at some of them. So in folder of employee eight, We've got a cloud report, currently 14.1 megabytes. In the folder 17, we've got one of our reference guides for Autobahn, currently standing at 3.84 megabytes. Now let's look at the Autobahn process. In this case, we've got a three-step process, very logical. We download the files from SharePoint first, then they get compressed, and then they get back uploaded to SharePoint. Um, I've just copied and pasted a few of the running logs here. So the download for download, for example, Autobahn would look at the SharePoint location it is pointed at, would look at any other filters, which they may be there, for example, look for certain file types only. And in this case, to iterate through all the subfolders in the location. So it, it identified three documents it had to download. And the total process took 4.78 seconds to get these three documents fetched down to Autobahn. Now the next step would be to actually compress these documents and again just a couple of snapshots here from the log to compress the cloud report by 63% quite impressive it took just under four seconds and the Autobahn reference guide had been compressed by 44% in three seconds. Step number three to put them to the output location again Three files have been identified. We've only shown two here earlier. And then they get put to the output location and exactly back to the folder where they belong, 8, 17, and 23 here, so that each employee gets his or her files in a compressed format. Quick look at the output location itself. As we said, it's called out. Same folder structure underneath. And if we look in folder of employee number eight, so the Cloud report has been compressed from 14.1 to 5.3 megabytes and the reference guide from 3.8 to 2.17. In a very similar fashion, this process could also be set up via the email step in Autobahn where employees send an email with the uncompressed files, Autobahn compresses it and sends the smaller documents back to the employees. Now, this brings us to the end of my little presentation, which I hope you found of interest. And I hope that one day maybe you will join the over 2000 organizations in over 50 countries in the world who already rely on Aquaforest software with their daily document processing. Many thanks, all the best and goodbye.